and i had a lot of um people within the organization who actually wanted me to um let's say apologize or delete it or i personally believe that whatever i said in that particular tweet 95% of this country will actually agree like i don't think i have said something that controversial also but even to that if people are uh this intolerant i am not um for the ban of this documentary in any way I'm being joined by the biggest newsmaker of the week, Anil Anthony, whose tweet a couple of days ago had caused much discomfort to the Congress Party. Anil Anthony had tweeted in in support of the Modi government and against the BBC documentary on Prime Minister Modi and Gujarat riots. A day after, he resigned from his primary membership of the Congress Party and also all the positions that he held. Thank you so much for joining us. I welcome you to the News Minute. I want to start off by the most obvious question why did you resign from the post that you held what prompted you to do so after all these controversies i thought that right now i am at this uh, stage in my professional career where i would not be able to do justice to the current post that i am having and a lot of things are untenable for me to continue being an office bearer so i thought that it is better that I, better that i quit my current roles and let somebody who is more suited to it actually hold it at this moment because um, i think that is fair on everybody including the party you've also mentioned that you have been getting a lot of threats uh, and you know you've been getting uh, trolled very uh, trolled very badly after you put out that tweet uh, could you explain to us what kind of threats were these online or were you getting even threats offline what was the nature of the trolling that you faced see so whatever happened in the last 24 hours it uh, let's say crystallized certain of my thoughts and uh, it convinced me that uh, this is what i should be doing at this particular point of time uh, so if you go back to where all this started two days back uh, at put a tweet which personally i believe was a very innocuous tweet where first of all i had made it very clear that i have a lot of political differences with the bjp but still i did feel that mm, a certain political narration was being driven around across the country in the last 4 5 days and i didn't think that it is going to be good for our um long term national interest in a lot of aspects and i just wanted to bring that out also as a counter view which shouldn't have threatened or irked anybody i just had three lines one of them was let's say this particular documentary which people are talking about i have nothing against the documentary i have nothing against the screening of the documentary but still i like i am not for the banning of any um any kind of artistic expression or a documentary or a film or a book or a movie like end of the day it's a democracy and personally i feel that it's a free country where everybody have the right to see whatever they want unless let's say unless there are there are exceptions and personally i don't even know if this is an exception but i did raise a concern and the concern is this particular documentary comes from certain places for example one of the people mr jack straw who uh, whose views is actually taken as one of the primary views of this do- documentary he was the same person who was one of the masterminds of the iraq war which uh, resulted in the death of lakhs of people displacement of lakhs of people etc etc and this is somewhere it is coming from and it's a reality and i just brought i just brought that point out and the second thing which i mentioned is let's say if we actually create a scenario in this country where we have our institutions we have our courts i am not saying that they are always right i myself i'm sure disagree with many of the verdicts similarly there are other institutions some of the institutions may be <clears throat> 20% efficient 50% efficient 80% 100% it's all subjective and it varies but whatever it is finally i don't think that it is a good precedence to actually create a thought process within the country where mm, uh, let's say the views or uh, let's say um, the um, let's say the judgments or whatever it is of a external foreign entity or a organization actually have more precedence over any of the domestic institutions because that i personally believe will in the long run uh, it will dilute a lot of our critical national 
interest including sovereignty so this so there are three four of these thoughts and i just put it as a very innocuous tweet and personally i don't think that i have spoken anything against the uh, views or values or anything of the party and i don't think that it was meant to let's say create so much like political hurricane that it created in the last two days so i found it very surprising and amusing but when that happened again like i said i don't think that i did uh, say anything against the party line or uh, party values or party policies etc but at the same time once this started becoming a little circulator around i had a lot of um, people within the organization who actually wanted me to um, let's say apologize or delete it or let's say um, or um, uh, let's say um, or give a counter view telling something else also and personally i i didn't do that because i thought that whatever i was doing is based on my convictions and my own um, uh, let's say whatever i think is the right thing and i stood by what i did and then let's say in the next few hours um, let's say there was this huge um, uh, um, cyber attacks with so many of these hate messages and so many of these hate whatsapp messages and threats and obscenities etc etc which is still filling in my facebook wall it is still going on like it still hasn't ended even though the degree has come down so all this has been happening and then when that happened like personally i felt a little disappointed by many of my fellow colleagues because i felt that let's say finally we all work together we may have a differences but this is not the way to handle certain differences and we all claim that we are let's say trying to fight hatred we are trying to let's say unite everybody we are fighting for free speech and finally like if you can't even tolerate one sentence which doesn't even go anything against your organization's any core belief or any core value in any manner and i personally believe that whatever i have said in that particular tweet 95% of this country will actually agree in various aspect like i don't think i have said something that controversial also but even to that if people are uh this intolerant then there is a certain um disconnect and i was fairly disappointed with the whole scenario uh i want to focus on one part uh, of your uh, reply right now you said that you were asked to delete or explain your tweet or perhaps even put a counter view was this uh, done through official channels or were there party colleagues who were encouraging you to do that how did that play out were you officially asked by the party high command or the office bearer to delete this tweet so officially a lot of unhappiness regarding what i did was expressed uh then there was a lot of pressure come from different corners including my colleagues to do either of these three four options and then there were public statements from very a few very prominent congressmen including the leader of opposition and the youth congress president etc etc telling that i have spoken something against the party point of view which i personally don't believe in any manner and then it just kept on escalating so i do understand where things are coming from like i have been seeing this organization ever since i'm a kid i understand the structure in this organization so i understand where things come from so uh, but i was not willing to uh, let's say step back or uh, let's say rescind or do any of those things because i do feel that i stood for my own beliefs and like i said like it's a certain thought which was majority of this country will actually agree with and resonate with for good reasons i want to ask your reaction to a tweet uh, you know put out by one of the senior leaders of congress party mr jairam ramesh yesterday uh, evening he put out a tweet comparing you and uh, mr uman chandi's son and uh, he somewhere questioned your commitment uh, to the party and also the bharat uh, jodo yatra undertaken by rahul gandhi how do you react to you know i can i saw the tweet um, i can completely understand if he is a little upset because the 
initial resignation letter i had sent two different resignation letter one to kerala to uh, my pcc president cc to dr shashitharur also since he is the chairperson of that cell but ironically a few months back he has resigned also from that particular post but that i don't nobody knows if it is even accepted or not so i cc him also and in the national level i uh, did send another resignation letter which is what in the redacted format i had uh, put in twitter yesterday and uh, it was one of the people it was addressed to was mr jaram ramesh because he is the head of the communication department also uh, so i can completely understand if he is a little upset or uh, by my action and and i do understand if he is unhappy also but as far as his yatra is concerned i don't have any official responsibility in any manner so with everything else that is going on in my life like i don't think i have the time to just walk around here and there without any purpose uh, so i don't feel uh, any regret and or let's say i don't think like of course two people are doing different things but i i think it's comparing apples and oranges i want to also you know talk about your tweet and you have uh, the last line in particular where you said that this could compromise the sovereignty of the country uh, how does this doc one i want to know if you watched the bbc documentary the second part is also out now have you uh, watched either of them and two why do you think it uh, compromises the sovereignty how can a documentary uh, compromise the sovereignty of a country like india so again uh, so this is about how we interpret things so i the last sentence like now i can't exactly remember the wording so if, let me just check about it but generally like actually what was said is it's, it's setting a precedent which in the long term could undermine the sovereignty that is what i said and that is something which i would stick by even now i haven't said that this documentary is going to undermine the sovereignty like india sovereignty is actually something which is way beyond um any documentary or any cause can just let's say undermine or destroy in in a moment or anything like that it is a very strong thing but at the same time let's say there are certain precedences which if we set in the long run definitely can create certain challenges i just want to again ask you if you've uh, gotten a chance to watch the documentary and what no, exactly I no i haven't watched the documentary i have seen certain ex experts of it but at the same time like i haven't watched the documentary no i haven't mm-hmm. so what are your specific objections to the documentary so there is you? like end of the day like I, I like i'm fairly sure that several aspects are things that is a reality but at the same time my my objection was not really on let's say the documentary or its content because i don't even know what the content is it is about let's say i'm just cautioning about its origin where i am saying that let's say some of the people behind the documentary are also the same people who are actually the masterminds behind the iraq war and that is a reality and the second thing is end of the day like i am not very impressed by a lot of people including my colleagues who suddenly says that since it is bbc it is the gospel truth because again that is not something that i believe in because end of the day just two years ago like uh, there was this incident where uh, there was a map of uh kashmir that was uh published by the B- bbc where half of kashmir was not there and then there was a lot of backlash and they had to apologize and they had to uh, and they had to publish the actual map so this is where this platform also come from so just because they say it doesn't mean that it is true in the country and this is a reality so this is the two things i said and i still stick by it right uh but be that as may i just want to ask you as a journalistic exercise uh irrespective of what the supreme court ruling has been which by the way has only uh, cleared prime minister modi of any criminal conspiracy uh but is uh, what is the problem as a journalistic exercise if any news organization has gone and done its uh, investigation and put out the truth with considerable space let's remember uh, given even two supporters of mr modi because uh, swapan das gupta who who is a very vocal supporter of mr modi has also been uh, you know given ample space so as a journalistic exercise why can't that be done there is nothing wrong in it like so here this is why i keep on saying again and again like i am not for the banning or blockage of any 
artistic expression including this documentary or any doc documentary or any book or any movie or any show or anything like that that's, so that is an entirely different um, issue itself and this is a uh, um, particular issue where i don't think me and many of the people who are suddenly shouting against me have any differences at all because i do feel that there is nothing wrong in let's say anybody doing a certain journalistic um, exercise nor there is any problem in them screening it or displaying it to the public in any manner also because end of the day we are the world's largest democracy that is something which we are very proud of and in a democracy uh, things including freedom of speech and freedom of expression are something which are very sacrament if you want to ensure that we remain a democracy so there is nothing wrong in any of those things so in that sense uh, are you opposed to the blocking of the documentary by the union government is that something that you oppose no 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 i am like end of the day i don't no no let me re recorrect it so uh, i am not um, for the ban of this documentary in any manner so you do believe that uh, irrespective of where it's coming from like you said to quote you it comes from a dark and dubious place but you do believe that it should have been allowed to be viewed in india and uh, for example there, there are things in any manner no yeah there is nothing wrong in displaying it in any manner but at, at the same time let's say i don't think that let's say people who suddenly try to display it to show certain messages also i, I don't think that they are also really understanding the broader perspectives too so that is my point of view okay i want to also just ask you uh, how your father who is one of the senior most leaders uh, in the congress party today how has this impacted him how has he reacted to your resignation because he's also in the congress working committee uh, have you had a conversation with him and what does he have to say about it so my father actually this year uh, out of over five decades he has Uh, retired from parliamentary politics he has relocated back to kerala he is still in the working committee but i think when the previous president was chosen he had made it very clear that uh, he doesn't intend to even carry on in the working committee after uh, from now on because it's almost 38 plus years in the working committee also so i think he is done with all this and he is enjoying his semi retired life in kerala so i don't think anything i do will be harming his political career in any manner Uh, and at the same time uh, mm, and after the resignation i haven't had a chance to speak to him too because actually i did but at the same time let, let's say not about this issue because he is actually surrounded by many people because he is uh, now in um, my native place in alappi where one of my family friend my, one of my family members one of my cousins himself is getting married there and so my entire family is actually in that village and there are quite a lot of people around and we haven't really had any time to speak about it i'm, I'm not even sure that uh, he will agree to whatever i did to but um, i do think that he will understand or appreciate the thought process behind it because personally i i think that whatever i had done i had done it uh, based on whatever is my best uh, understanding and whatever is my best um, believes and uh, it, it was based on my convictions and what my conscience said and nothing has changed ever since so at this moment that is where things are one of the criticisms that some of your colleagues in the uh, you know in the kerala unit of congress have come out with is that uh, you were waiting for a reason to resign and you have taken a you know a step back since the assembly election since the congress lost the assembly elections uh, in kerala how do you respond to this so i had already mentioned about the scenario like it was not waiting for a reason to resign it was actually like we were trying to create a platform where we wanted certain changes to be made and for the last 16 17 months those changes have been happened so these are two very different um things altogether like uh, i was never let's say immediately after the assembly election i was not thinking that okay next time an opportunity comes i'll just jump out that is not the scenario at all after 21 uh, the 21 elections for us was a uh, it was not the greatest of results for us where uh, for the first time in almost four decades uh, an opposition party did not 
come to power after the election, did not form a government after the election. So this is the first time in almost four decades that is happening. And the party in Kerala, the state unit had a lot of churn. A new PCC president came, a lot of new team came, like a lot of churn is still happening. And then um, our unit got dissolved. So at that moment, Dr. Shashi Tharoor and I were the only two people who were suddenly in the unit, everything else were no longer existing. And then let's say one year back, there was a scenario which prompted Dr. Tharoor himself to resign. So now I'm the only person in that particular unit officially. And we have been telling the party in the state uh, to actually at least create a working team for us to take things forward. But it's almost 17, 18 months and it hasn't happened. So finally, I. so these are all different, different things which uh, led to yesterday because end of the day, like we all need to, um, if we are doing something like we need to keep moving forward and if that forward motion is not there, then I wouldn't want to be stuck in a scenario waiting indefinitely for anything forever. Uh, I want to also ask if you've had a conversation with the Dr. Tharoor, who you also thanked in your resignation letter, and also what do you think of his views uh, in one of the interviews that he's given to Barkhadar, where he said that, you know, everybody's moved on, even the Muslims in India have moved on from the Gujarat riots, uh, which happened 21 years ago. So it's time everybody moves on. I want to know what exactly your views are on that statement. See, Dr. Tharoor, yes, I did speak to him yesterday, like it was late night and we just had a uh, casual chat. He is like a long-term mentor to me. Even before I started working with the Congress party, like we had in, been interacting for years because things including my communication to my writing and many of my things, like he always gave very friendly advice. So again, yesterday there was a mentally advice where he did give some of his point of views um, and I did take it in very good spirits, like I even, he didn't agree with everything I said in my tweet also, like there were differences of opinions, but there, there, I think our broader views are fairly similar because at the end of the day, he also said like a documentary can't ruin our sovereignty because it is too big. Of course, that also, I understand that I said that certain trends can in the long run, that is what it is, but whatever he said, I do agree. And regarding 2002 also, like whatever happened was a dark chapter in Indian history, but at the same time. Yeah. Like 20 years back again, let's say we don't want to keep on uh, undoing wounds again and again. And uh, let's say I do think that people should try to, like I agree with what he said, because end of the day, like again, trying to go back to painful experiences and again, trying to relieve it again and again and again. I don't think it's going to do any good for anybody. Uh, but there are people uh, even now who think that justice has not been served and, you know, they've gone through trauma. Their families have been torn apart. And recently we saw how the people who were convicted for gang rape of Bilkis Khan have been released and uh, the ruling party welcomed them, members of the ruling party, uh, welcomed them uh, with Carlins. So do you think that it would be difficult for those who went through the trauma to move on uh, and close the chapter without actually getting any conclusion? So... So again, like uh, the Bilkis Bano episode, whatever happened is again one of the most shameful episodes that have happened in Indian history recently. Like I was not at all happy with that too. Um, and I do understand that even in Gujarat, um, there are many people who are uh, waiting for justice or they still have wounds. Um, but uh, the way to do it, like personally, I think it has to be done in a manner where we don't try to reopen the wounds and again and again and again and try to create a national narration built on it. It should be focusing on the victims and perpetrators and trying to bring justice there and not to make it into a political narration. Before I let you go, I want to ask you something. Many people are wondering politically, what next for Anil Antony? Will you uh, look at joining some other party perhaps or uh, uh, what will your course of action be? At this moment, I have zero political plans at this moment. There is nothing I have um, thought in any uh, manner because whatever happened in the last 24 hours went in a whirlwind, like 48 hours actually, two last two days. So today is actually gladly um, one of those days where I'm just finally having a breather. I haven't really thought of any future political plans. I'm 
uh, at this moment i have uh, zero plans to let's say pursue anything else i am more interested in pursuing my other professional activities at this moment which i really like doing also so at this moment i that's that's my priority right thank you so much for your time i understand it's been a busy couple of days uh, so i really thank you for taking our time and we here at the news minute will track uh, what you do and what the fallout of this entire thing is thanks thank you thank you thank you for your time today thank you